guys, so today's video is going to be a get ready with me and a Q&A all wrapped into one. I asked you guys for questions on Instagram and they are rolling in, so let's get started. Okay, so the first question comes from a new Jin 7 and she, I think, asks what happiness means to you. Okay, so I feel like this I kind of somewhat addressed, well, maybe it's implied in my like update type video but I think happiness is all relative right like having a good day finding the small the little things that um, make you smile is is enough like I don't I don't think there is like a quantifiable amount for happiness it's just like whatever um, puts a smile on your face like it's the smallest things that make a big difference I don't think I should be talking while I do this but this is the CoverGirl True Blend Matte Made Foundation. I did mix these two colors. I talked about these in my I'm Back Products I've Been Loving video. This is the foundation that has the little particles in it. And like one other person said they tried it and had the same experience. I don't know if you'll be able to see on camera. But there are like little, it looks like sand. It's like the weirdest... Thing. It's like I don't need to exfoliate while I put my foundation on. The next question comes from Tiffany L. Wen and she asks, would you rather be fluent in seven different languages of your choice or be able to talk to animals? Uh, so I'm just using Tarte Shape Tape right now just to cover up some redness. I told you guys this before about like my preferences as far as like makeup, face makeup goes. And I don't care if like blemishes show or like redness like a little bit. I don't care. I mean, it's my skin. Like I don't need full, full coverage. I've never had like full coverage where you like can't see any imperfections. Um, I just like to blur them a little bit. But anyway, back to the question. Practicality wise, obviously seven different langu mm -mm. languages would be better. But if I could talk to animals, I think that would be amazing be like freaking Dr. Doolittle. Okay, next I'm going to powder my face. So since I've been gone for so long, I was just trying to use products that were sitting in my collection. So this one I'm almost done with. It was from Rimmel. It was They send it to me in PR. It's the Insta Fix and Matte Translucent Powder. I really enjoyed this. I talked about it in a favorites at one point in time, but I've never ever seen it in stores. So I don't know if it was like a limited edition product or what, but if not, they should totally or if it was they should bring it back if not have you guys ever seen this in store it's the um matte powder that had like hashtags um embedded in it so i'm gonna try to use this up um in the next like few weeks or so and then i'm also gonna use the it cosmetics bye bye pores pressed powder which i just opened up like last week so i've been using it a little bit i don't i don't know if i can really form much of an opinion about it yet but I'll be using those. Okay, so this next question comes from Whitney Spurlock, and she asks, what was the first video you ever made about? <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. Keep in mind, you guys, this was eight years ago. Eight years. So this was back when everyone filmed on their MacBooks. Um, it was not like a requirement to have uh, an actual camera and in case you didn't realize this if you filmed on your MacBook right it was just like one cut there was no editing there was no no cutting out like pauses or ums or like if you misspoke it was like well that's real right so yeah just to set that up for you so my first video I don't even remember what I I was talking about in it but I remember that I filmed it in the dark just to lay that out <laughs> in the dark it was nighttime and I was like well this backlit screen of my brand new MacBook will <laughs> be enough lighting first of all this video does not exist anymore like it's literally on private because I hate it I actually might have even deleted it no I don't think I did just because I was like I can't I can't delete the first video but it was absolutely horrendous I mean all of my early videos are horrendous but people actually watched them. I mean, at that time, YouTube wasn't, like, at nearly, not nearly as big as it is now. But it could have been, like, a favorites video. It was, like, makeup related. But 
in the dark. <laughs> That's the biggest takeaway from this. In the dark. Tiffany Elwin also asks, what movie can you watch over and over without getting tired of it? Well, my favorite movie is The Holiday, so I could watch that five ever. I freaking love that movie. But I could also watch the Harry Potter series, like from start to finish, over and over again too. I like pretty much any rom-com, so I'm really fine with any of those. But I also really enjoy Disney movies, more the modern ones than the old ones that I watched as a kid. But my two favorites are Wreck-It Ralph and Big Hero 6, so I could watch those for days, like really. But um, I did want to talk about To All the Boys I've Loved Before. I have not seen it, um, but I talked about this on Instagram already, but I know a lot of you don't follow me there. I <laughs> When that movie came out, I received so many DMs that I remind them of Laura Jean or the other, or vice versa, whichever way. So many. To the point where I was like, what are they talking about? Because I live under a rock and I'm like not up to date with like the cool new things or whatever. So I was like, oh, so it's this movie. I did not read the books. I want to read the book before I see the movie because I just, I want to. I've, I've been tempted to just like, <laughs> F it, I'm going to watch the movie, but I want to read the books, at least the first one. Um, and it's weird because these books were totally on my radar when I was at that like teenage, like young adult, like stage of my life. And I read like all those types of books and I don't know why I never read that one because of all books to read, like probably should read the one, one of the ones by an Asian American author about an Asian American girl. By the way, I was contouring with the Catrice palette that I've talked about. This is my second one already. I've showed you guys this before, but I really do love this contouring palette. Don't use that one at all, but anyway, so there's that. Okay, Tiffany has two more questions, and they're, she, these are some good questions. I did ask you guys to get creative. So she asks, what mythical creature do you wish actually existed? Uh, I know like my initial instinct is to say unicorn, but I would actually be terrified if a unicorn was real because horses and I do not get along. They're beautiful animals, but I had a traumatic experience when I was younger and my, the rest of my family like loves horseback riding and mammoth when we go during the summer, but I just, I can't, I don't enjoy it. Like it stresses me out because this is a giant animal who could like run up a hill, which happened to me when I was eight and I have no control. I mean, I have the reins, and I can like, yeah, anyway, I, I digress. I'm going off on a tangent. So unicorn's out. <laughs> so I don't know. I guess I would go mermaid just because I feel like maybe if mermaids existed, then they could also like, I don't know, there has to be something that could allow me to also go underwater like that. I don't know, this doesn't really count as like mythical creature, but if like magic was real and witches and wizards were real, like Harry Potter, that would be amazing. I would freaking love it. What if it does and we're all just muggles? Is that not the most depressing thought? Sorry to put that in your head. <laughs> just saying. Okay, so that was the Becca Sunlit Bronzer and Capri Coast. I really love this bronzer. I didn't realize, but I grabbed all these Becca products. I'm going to be using for my highlight the Lilac Geode Highlight, which actually, is this? It was limited edition. Maybe it's not available anymore. I'm going to use... Ah! <laughs> I'm going to use this Wet n Wild Precious Petals Highlight. So what I do is I use like a darker, darker highlight first. I do my blush, which today I'm going to use Flower Child by Becca, which is my all-time favorite blush. And, well, one of them at least. And then on top of my blush, then I'm going to go on with Champagne Pop, so just so you know what's happening. Okay, so last question from Tiffany. She asks, if someone narrated your life, who would you want to be the narrator? Okay, assuming it didn't have to be like someone I actually know, like it could be a celebrity, I think I would want like Anna Kendrick or something because I do feel like she has a very dry sense of humor. She's kind of like awkward like I am, so I feel like that would be a good fit. I don't know if you guys can see. So this adds like a sheen, right? And then I put my blush on top of it. And then I'll just do a little bit more of another highlight. That's been my like cheek routine, if you will. My Veggie Feed asks, 
uh, I think it's supposed to be if. If you could live anywhere you wanted on Earth, where would you want to live and in what house? I would want to live in Hawaii. I don't know what house, but I would want to live in Hawaii. Probably on Oahu. Um, and the next question is from Julia. Oh, see, as an Asian, I should be able to pronounce this. X-I-A. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm not going to try. How do you feel about pineapple on pizza? I really hope that this doesn't earn me, like, a bunch of unsubscribes right now, but my favorite pizza is Hawaiian. So, how do I feel about pineapple on pizza? I freaking love it, and if you don't, it's fine, because I don't really care how you take your pizza. As long as you don't judge mine, I won't judge yours. I changed my mind again on the highlight. I'm going to do the ColourPop Hair Kitty Kitty that I talked about in my, um products I've been loving video because I don't think I've ever showed this on camera. So, figured it would make sense to do so right now. So anyway, the next question comes from Alice in Baboland? 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 Cheesy question, is it better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all? We're diving deep. Hmm. Okay. Well, hmm. I assume you're talking about romantic love because to have never loved like family or even a friend, that's just like uber sad. But <laughs> um, romantically, I don't know, man. You know, I guess it, I, it has to be it's better to have loved and lost because to never have loved, to never have experienced... I don't know. Frankly, at this point in my life, do I really care about romantic love? I should. At my age, I should, but I, I don't <laughs> at all. So I'm going to go with it's better to have loved and lost, to at least have had that experience. And once it's, once it's out of your life, if you want to pursue it again, go for it. If not, don't, you know? Do you! Okay, so this next question comes from Helen Stars. And other, other people have asked me this, so I'm just going to address it. This is something that I've avoided at all costs. So um, she asks, how did you figure out what you wanted to do as a professional career? Okay, listen, you guys, this is something that, a question I've been asked, like, my entire YouTube career. Um, and I always, always avoid it because I don't freaking know, like, what I want to do with my life. And this is, like, a big, big issue for me, just like kind of like a, an existential crisis type of a thing, but also like within my family, like when, and oh god, this is why like I hate seeing people because, you know, of course the, the question's always like, oh, how are you? Like, and what are you doing now? So I work as um, like an after school nanny for a few families, and I've been doing this for years, and it's like, as someone who went to university for four years, got a degree, um, and went to a good school, not even like I, I didn't go to a community college, not that, not that there's anything wrong with that, but like I, I went to a university for four years, there are all these expectations, and I understand them, but there's so much judgment, like there's, there's only so much that I can take, right, and so it's like, I, I hate it, like you guys don't, it gives me so much anxiety to talk about it. Like, literally, I'm shaking right now. It, it's it's caused a lot of issues for me, just, like, as a, as a person and just, like, within my family and, like, like, I feel like a failure and, like, now this is getting, like, a little bit much to talk about in this setting. But, yeah, it's just, it's one of my biggest insecurities and the reason that I don't have a real job, which, let me tell you, I can't even count how many times people have asked me when I'm going to get a real job, but we're going to not talk about that. So the biggest reason that I don't have that is because I don't have a dream job. Like there's nothing out there that I'm like this is what I want to spend my life doing. Like there, I, I wish that I did. You guys don't even know how much I wish that I had such a passion for something that like that was what I wanted to do. That was what I wanted to strive for. I don't. <laughs> I don't. Because I work with kids and I'm really good with kids, people are like, why don't you become a teacher? I don't want to be a teacher. Listen, I think teachers are amazing. As someone who spends so much time with kids, I give all the props to all the teachers out there. And my brother's a teacher. I know how freaking hard it is. And I also know that that's not what I want to do. Maybe I will 
at some point in time, but right now, is that my dream? No. Anyway, that's why I figured I should address it because I know a lot of people in my generation, a lot of people are in the same boat of, as me. And so I just wanted to let you guys know I don't have my shit together. Not even close. So you're not the only one. Does that make you feel better? Okay, I asked you guys, so I was doing like a random Q&A on Instagram the other day and I told you guys my love life doesn't exist, but people are still asking me questions about this. So, um, let's see, Lexi18 asked, what's your relationship status? And I would say, um, bag lady, cat lady, <laughs> single, and not looking to mingle. Oh Jesus, Nafisha Tasneem43 asks, how come you're not dating anyone? <laughs> Which is like really accusatory. Um, and have you always been single? Just I have. I assume that just as I have. Okay. First of all, I don't want to date anyone, so I'm not dating anyone. That's why. And also, the my last semblance of a relationship. I don't. I don't even know if you could call it that. Was literally like three years ago. Four years ago? I don't, I don't even remember, which is like <laughs> saying something, I guess. But yeah, I have no desire to get in any type of relationship. And it's okay, everything has to do with my age right now, right? So everyone is like getting into a career and everyone is, not everyone, I should not say everyone, a lot of people um, are getting engaged and even getting married. And so there's this whole pressure of like, well, what? Like, why am I not just like everybody else, and why am I not, um, like, on that same timeline? Frankly, I'm just not interested. Like, I don't, I am not in a place for myself, um, comfort-wise and just, like, confidence-wise to pursue any sort of relationship with anybody. Like, I'm not in that place, and I think it's important to be able to recognize that. I don't want to get into a relationship to have someone else complete me, or to have someone else fix me, or to, like, make me feel better about myself, like, whatever it may be. I'm not, I'm not in that zone. So, I'm not, I'm just not looking for that and yes I have been in relationships all of which took place when I was younger I've told you guys before I think that I, I don't want to have kids and now I don't even know if I want to get married there's just like a lot of um, life experience that changes your mind about certain things and uh, I don't feel like what I want is along the lines of what a lot of people do so that makes me very hesitant to even try to get into something like that, you know? Just because it's like, what I want is very different, I, I think. I mean, I'm sure there are people out there who are like me, but I mean, to say that we would be compatible is like totally a separate thing, right? Beyond what we want. So anyway, that's why. So I feel like I was ranting a little bit there, but I was using the CoverGirl Ultra Fine Brow Pencil in Soft Brown, the one I talked about in my video, and then I've been using this forever, as you can tell, I've hit major pan on the lighter shade, but this is the Anastasia Brow Powder Duo in Medium Brown. I do have a backup of this, and I actually got a lighter shade too, because I was like, well, one day I'm going to run out of this, and I'm going to need another one. <laughs> this is going to last me forever. Okay, so I kind of got to jump on the eyes here. I did prep them with my good old Maybelline Color Tattoo in Bold Gold. This is the base that I use for every eye look, regardless of if it should be gold based or not. So I did a look yesterday that a lot of you guys really loved on Instagram. And so I figured I would try to recreate that a little bit, maybe switch it up um, a little bit for today. But I used, I've been playing with this like all week. This is the Urban Decay Born to Run palette. They did send this to me. Um, and I thoroughly enjoy it. I mean, look at all those colors. You've got a lot of variety in there in both finishes and textures and colors, obviously. You have a lot of good pops in there, which I really appreciate, um, but plenty of neutrals as well. The one thing that I wish they had in here was a matte um, highlight color, but overall it's really good. Any of you guys know cameras? Can anyone help me out in how to make me look less Casper-like? Because I swear, 
like this washes me out like nobody's business and I've played with other settings and stuff before and I just can't get it right but anyway let's get back to the questions I've got one from my friend Gabby she is a makeup artist you guys should check her out her Instagram is Gabrielle H M U A she asked a really hard question if you could only use three makeup items for the rest of your life what would they be okay I don't know if you're asking for specifics so I'm just gonna go like category Okay, so one may be cheating, but I would do like a neutral eyeshadow palette because I feel like I could use one of those colors for my brows. I might even be able to like get away with like contouring and blush depending on the colors in that palette. Um, I would do a foundation. I would rather have foundation than concealer. That's just my personal preferences. And then one highlight. So I would do one highlight, a foundation, and an eyeshadow palette. Okay, if I remember correctly, so I already um, did a little bit of the blending crease color. I'm going to stop with the air quotes, but you guys know I don't actually have a crease. I just work with the, what is it called? The corresponding space. So I used Weekender, which is this color right here, to kind of blend that out there. And then I'm going to go in with Still Shot, the one right next to it, which is this kind of corally peachy color. Um, and I'm going to uh, add that a little bit, diffuse that color out again into that non-crease crease space. I think this brush was from a BoxyCharm. This is from Moda Pro and I just started using it with this palette because I just wanted some kind of fluffy brush and I really like this brush a lot actually. I should probably get back to the questions. Let's finish that up. Okay the next question comes from Heidi Destiel. As in Dean and Castiel? Is it pronounced Destiel or is it Destiel? I always read it in my mind as Destiel. Anyway, this is a supernatural thing. Okay, how do you feel to see your own face with and without makeup? Curious because I always get too self-conscious about it. So, okay, this is a place where I have grown a lot but still have a lot of uh, room to grow. And I would say, okay, when I first started wearing like full-on makeup, like as in eyeshadow, eyeliner, foundation, all of that stuff. It was like my senior year of high school. And it was, it's kind of like a once you start, you can't stop kind of a thing because then if you don't wear it, people are like, whoa, <laughs> are you sick? Like, like, do you not feel well today? Like, is something going on? Are you tired? Like, it's this whole big thing, right? And it's something that I would have rather avoided, so... Um, this, why does this look so uneven right now? Once I started wearing makeup, I kind of felt like I had to wear it all the time. Plus, I definitely think it makes me look um, older, which is something I've always had an issue with. Like, even now, people think I'm in high school, which is... That was, like, a whole thing. And then when I got to college, I wore, like, full-on makeup, like, every day. And then the transition happened when I went to Hawaii. I think it was in, like, 2015 was the last time I went. I think summer 2015. And like when you're in Hawaii and you're really tan, like you just feel like really beautiful and like glowy and then you don't really feel like you need to wear makeup. This is just, okay, this is my personal feeling about it. And so I would just like, I wouldn't wear any. I mean, I would wear like some face makeup, but I didn't wear any eyeshadow or eyeliner. I might have worn like mascara, um, but that was it. And so when I got back from Hawaii, I was still like really tan for me and I felt really like glowy and good still so I just stopped wearing a lot of eye makeup except mascara was like the only thing I wore um, and so that like started the transition for me so now even a lot of days most days I don't wear eyeshadow and eyeliner I just wear mascara and that's like a big thing for me because the biggest thing I like to play up with makeup is my eyes because without like all the shadow my eyes look a lot smaller, and I, I look a lot younger, and so there's that whole thing. But now I'm just kind of like, it is what it is, and I do feel a lot better about it. I still don't leave the house with, like, no makeup on, because I feel like I look a lot more put together with something on. So that's still, like, I'm still not there yet. And as far as how I feel without makeup, like, what I look like, I mean, I've had this face. <laughs> this is my face. And... It is what it is. I, I don't feel, I guess, a particular way about it. Maybe indifference, but I'm okay. Like, I'm, I don't look at myself, my face anyway, I'm like, oh, Of course, there's always little things you can pick apart about your body, about your face, about your hair, about your clothes, like everything. But, you know, I try not to, to go there, at least not too often. 
Okay, so I just went in, that was the shade Rip here. So, so far I've gone just like down the line here. But now I'm going to tap into this green Wanderlust here, and I'm also going to play with Radio. So these were the two that I kind of worked into my crease slash the back half of my lid um, for yesterday's look. So I'm going to work with those. I have to say they were a little bit harder to work with in that way, just because I don't think that they're typically crease colors. Um, but... I, I, it worked out in the end, so I'm going to try to do that again today. But the next question is a really interesting one. It comes from Rima V. She has two questions, actually. She says, how have your values changed compared to a year ago or five years ago? And she also asks, do you think the influencer bubble is going to pop? Which are both... Well, first of all, the influencer question is highly relevant right now with everything that's going on in the beauty community. <laughs> But let's go back to that first question. Values, okay, I don't think my values have changed as much as my, I guess, outlook on life has changed. Like my priorities are different, but my values I think remain the same. Like I think it's important to be, yeah, see this color just does not wanna hang out here. Anyway, so like I, more than anything, think it's so important to just be a good person, to be a kind person. Like with the environment that we have right now, there's just so much criticism, so much negativity, so much judgment, and it's, and it's just, it's not okay. Like there are plenty of those types of people out there. Like we don't need any more of those. Um, and we don't need our next generation of kids to be like that either. Like there's just a lot of, um, God, just negativity and I, I I'm not for it I'm not I don't I am not down with it and I think it's wrong but as I'm not a parent so I can't you know make that change myself but like as as a person who I, I think a lot of people not a lot of people you guys I mean watch on here I try to be as um good right as I can and I want to be honest with you guys I want to but I also want to make you guys smile and be like a happy person here I don't think any of you guys come here to uh cry or to like <laughs> get revved up about anything that's not the type of channel that I run and then not, not the type of community I want to be a part of so I don't know my whole thing is like just be kind be empathetic like I know there are people who literally don't have the ability to be empathetic, but most people do. And if you do, I just don't understand why you wouldn't be. But the worst type of person, actually, I feel, is the one that thinks they're empathetic and they're not. That is like, like you think you understand and you think you can feel what other people feel, but you can't. And like, that's really frustrating because anyway, that's, I'm going off on a tangent, but I just feel like kindness and just, be your best self is like so important. So god, it's so pale. So pale. Okay, so to get back into this, I did good as gone, which is this dark brown, a little bit on the outside, and then I did my tape thing, which you guys have all seen before. Um, but to clean this up, I'm going to take a matte shadow, which this is like the one shade that this palette doesn't have that I wish it did. And I'm looking forward to it right up blush. Um and this I think this is a ColourPop shadow that I use here. Hear me out. I feel like, yeah, this is ColourPop, right? So it's just a cream matte color. But I use this to clean up the crease. Not the crease. The angle here. And then I also use it to clean up under the brow. Um, by the way, I don't set my brows when I'm going to be wearing eyeshadow because I know with all the blending, it's just going to disrupt everything. So I save that for once my eyeshadow and everything is done, then I will use a brow gel. So if they look like super crazy right now, um, that's why. Okay, so her other question was, the, do you think the influencer bubble is going to pop? I feel like I could talk about this for like a full half hour video, but I, because I just have a lot of, I have a lot of feelings um, about this whole thing. I'm going in with Baja, this orangey, oops, orangey color here. I'm going to diffuse that out um, above all this darkness here, but you know, I hate the term influencer. 
I really do. Of all the places for us as creators to go, the term influencer is just horrible to me. And I will tell you why. I get it because we influence things. I don't, okay, I don't want to say we because I feel like I'm very far out of, like, who they're talking about when they say influencers. Um, but as a, as a content creator, which I, I never liked that term either, but I would gladly take that over influencer, um, I just feel like it, that's a, all we do is just influence the market. Influence what people buy. It's all about money. It's all about sales. It's all about just, like, prom promotion, right? It's just, it's a horrible, horrible space. Like, I just, I, I, I've very, <laughs> like I said, I have very strong feelings about this. Just the term influencer gets me riled up, but... I think it's good now that people are being exposed to a certain extent, right? Because there are just so many fake people um, in this realm of things online. And I think that it would be nice for things to be a little bit more authentic, a little bit more relatable. Like these people who make millions of dollars, like that is not relatable, but they want to be relatable. I remember when that was like the biggest thing when people were like, I'm so relatable. It's like, but not really it's just a weird thing do i think the bubble will pop i think certain influencers are in in the youngins terms uh canceled but i do feel like there is definitely a way for them to get back in like let a little bit of time pass and everybody kind of forgets what happened um and, and not just online just like in life in general that's kind of what happens so i don't know I don't think so. I don't think things are going to change much, at least not immediately. It's going to be like a gradual thing if it ever happens at all. But it's just a very frustrating space. It's part of why I just was like happy to not be here because it was just like a horrible environment. But you guys know I talked about that in my update video. Okay, so next question, a little bit lighter. Uh, do you have any favorite drugstore skincare products? Yes, I do. One of which, I have gone through bottles and bottles of this stuff. This is the Neutrogena Alcohol-Free Toner. Like you can see, it's like, I need to get a new one ASAP. Um, I really love that stuff. I also really like the Garnier um, Micellar Water, which I have also gone through a couple bottles of that as well. Let me grab it. It's this one right here. I use this to get off any stitch of my waterproof mascara. That's like the biggest thing that sometimes my wipes can't get rid of, so that gets rid of everything um, on my eyes. I only use it on my eyes. Okay, so for my makeup, so this is like basically the basis of what I wore yesterday. However, I worked in, so this is the Kat Von D Alchemist palette, which is another thing. Another brand that people say are, is canceled, and I get why. Um, if you don't know why, you might want to look into it. Uh, I have, I have... I have feelings <laughs> about that whole situation. I am very much one who is like, you know, do your own thing. If it's not hurting me, then I don't care. However, this is a thing that could definitely not hurt maybe me specifically, but other people in the general vicinity of her child. Okay, I don't want to get into it. I don't want this to be a thing, but I have feelings about it. So I kind of hesitate in showing this on camera because I used to really love this brand and now I don't really know. Um, and I had never actually used this palette um, on my face at all because I bought it because I thought it was stunning and I got it when it was on sale. Um, so I'm still going to use it just to kind of recreate the look that I did yesterday because so many people liked it. But then I think I'm probably going to put something over it just because. Okay, so I'm going to go in I'm trying to remember what I did yesterday. So I'm going to go in. In case you guys are unfamiliar, this is like a holographic palette. You can use it on your face or your eyes. It has a green, a purple, a blue, and a pink different shifting um, colors. So I'm going to go in with the green one first. I used the green, the blue, and the pink. And you couldn't really tell um, in like my Instagram things because I didn't do a close-up yesterday like I usually do. I don't think I did anyway. Um, but I did use all three of those. So in person, it was like a really cool look because it was definitely a multi-dimensional thing depending on the angle that you were looking at it. I don't know if you guys will be able to see this at all, but it is really God, I, I love holographic oh, makeup. It is just amazing. Okay, I'm gonna go in with blue now. I'm trying to remember like where I placed everything. I think this is how I did it. Does this look like yesterday's look? 
I'm gonna go with yes. And then I think I put the pink one, like, in the very inner, like, tear duct area, but now I, I don't remember. Oh yeah, I did. So I put it, like, in the very inner corner. I feel like this does not look the same as yesterday's, but we're gonna go with it anyway. For those of you who are aware of the whole Kat Von D situation, are you guys still gonna purchase from the brand? Now this is a very personal question and personal preferences, like I'm not judging you at all, um, I'm just genuinely curious because you guys know her liquid lipsticks are like one of my all time favorite makeup products, but I just have, I have feelings about this, so I'm really quite torn. Let me know, like, fully. I'm, I'm genuinely curious uh, what you guys are going to do. Or maybe you guys don't even care about it, which is fine, too. I don't mean, that's fine. <laughs> but for those of you who do have opinions about it, do leave them in the comments. Okay, for lack of space on my memory card and time here, I did do my liner. I used the LA Girl Line Art Matte Eyeliner, which I've been trying out for about a month now. It is a brush tip here. Or, sorry, a felt tip. And then I did do my mascara, which is the, where did I put it? The one I talked about in my video, the L'Oreal Voluminous Butterfly Intenza. Obviously, my eyes have very different shapes, so, and my lashes are super different, too, because this lid is more um, hooded. It My lashes don't, like, stand up as much on that one, if you will. And Margaret asks, favorite eyeshadow palette? Currently, I truly am loving this Born to Run palette. I know everybody's talking about it right now, so it's kind of like overkill and oversaturation in the videos recently, but I really am loving it. But to be quite honest, I would rather build my own collection of singles and put them in like a, a my own like magnetic palette um, like this than to actually buy a pre-made palette. I do feel like I have my favorite custom colors here, but I do enjoy the ColourPop palettes that I have, um, the Urban De other Urban Decay palettes that I have, but truly, truly, I would rather build my own collection of singles. Okay, so I'm gonna go on to the lower lash line. This is the Urban Decay 24-7 liner in Overdrive. I think this was part of the Born to Run uh, release because I know there are three liners that came out with that collection. Again, they did send this to me, um, but you guys, they've sent me so many eyeliners that I don't even know which go with which collections. But I thought this color is really, really pretty. It's like a really bright metallic teal, but it leans more on the green side, but it is really beautiful. I really do love this one. Um, but yeah, they sent me so many colors and I don't know, like, if some of them are limited edition, or if they're all permanent, part of the regular line, or what, I really have no idea. Um, but yeah, I just, I love this color. It's so eye-catching. I don't even know if the color is going to show up as pigmented and bright on camera, but... Okay, let's get back to the questions. Hitomin, Hitomin, 352. <laughs> What's your go-to outfit right now? Well, now that you guys know what I do, um... I have to dress kid friendly a lot, which is something that has definitely affected like my fashion preferences just to be like realistic and like I don't know, shop for like everyday purposes because I do have to be more covered up than I did when I was like on a college campus where everyone's an adult, don't want to have to worry about like wearing something that's like considered inappropriate when you're in a lecture hall of like 300 people. Um, right now I am going in with that Riff color, this one right here. It's really quite boring actually because now I just wear like t-shirts, tank tops, and like some denim shorts or some jeans or that, I mean, actually that's pretty much it. Yeah, I can't really be all that, uh, daring when I'm around kids a lot, so Unfortunately, that's not really the place to express myself fashion-wise, but I will usually then add like some accessories, so jewelry is a big one, um, and then my makeup sometimes, even though I haven't really been wearing a ton of it, but that can definitely play into it a little bit too. Um, and then I will usually throw on either like a flannel or like a cam my camo jacket or some something else to give it a little bit 
something something. Okay, last couple questions. Aiden Baby Ruth asks, if you could get any wish granted, what would you wish for? Okay. That's a good question. You know what, really, if I could have any wish granted, like, as f like besides like bringing people back because of anything, I would bring my grandpa and Beasley back, like, but obviously that's not something that I could do. But if it was true that we could do anything, I would probably wish for Sophie's help now that she's like older and she's having a really rough time. I, I would just wish for like a more comfortable state for her. Or actually, no, maybe I would just wish that she could have her sight back. I think that would make the biggest difference, quite frankly, if she could see again. Cause like, it's so sad because I used to like take her on walks every day, well when I was home anyway, um, like multiple times a day sometimes and then after every bath she would play. Um, with a toy and now like she can't do any of that anymore and it's just the saddest thing I've ever seen it's truly truly depressing um, to watch so so yeah I would wish for her sight back I think or maybe I would just wish that she never had that freaking tumor to begin with and we wouldn't have had to go through this whole thing but can't go backwards so I just went back in with those same three colors that I used from the alchemist palette so I did the green emerald the blue sapphire and the pink opal um, all in that like inner half there and I love putting holographic shadows over darker colors because it brings out that iridescence like hardcore and I love it um, I don't think the camera's gonna pick it up and do it justice but they are fantastic okay so I'm gonna take this is another Urban Decay liner I, they sent this to me I don't know what collection this was in but this is like a smoky um, cool brown this is the shade demolition but I'm going to add a little bit of this just to deepen up the lash line a little bit. I do feel like that makes a big difference for my eyes. Can you guys tell the difference? And then I am going to put some mascara on my lower lash line too. I'm going to use the uh, Cover Girl Clump Crusher. Um, looks like this. It has the curved wand. This is the one that Emily Noel 83 always uses for her lower lash line. Therefore, I also have to use it for my lower lash line. Um, I am so excited for her. This has nothing to do with the Q&A, but I'm so excited for her for her collection um, with Makeup Revolution. She, I've been watching her for like 10 years now, and I mean, she deserves it truly more than anybody does. She has worked so hard to build her channel and to stay so genuine, so, so, so down to earth. Um, but she, she's so creative. Like, she comes up with these concepts that aren't, like, outlandish. They're not, like, dumb crazy. They're, like, oh, that's creative and cool kind of a thing. Um, as opposed to a lot of what comes out these days. But I just really, really like her. She's just one of my all-time favorites if not my number one favorite and I like I said I've been watching her forever since she was like filming like I think I don't know if she ever filmed on a MacBook but it was like super grainy quality like back in the day I'm telling you like I've been watching her since elf products were all a dollar <laughs> that should put things in perspective if you truly like makeup and you're not here for like the ridiculous like sponsored overproduced type content you guys should check her out Okay, I'm going to take one last question. This is from Britt Jeanette. She's been a long-time follower of mine. Um, she asks, what's the best concert you've ever been to, and do you have any plans on going to any soon? Okay, I have to say, like, I am not a music festival person. That would give me extreme anxiety. Um, my university had a music festival, an annual one. Um... This is going to get dark, but until somebody died. And now they have, they changed it where it's like, takes place during the day. And there's like a lot more like safety um, restrictions and stuff. Like, yeah, it's a little dark. It was like, I think it was the year after I graduated that someone died. They didn't die at the festival, but I mean... It was related, so anyway, well, that got a little creepy, but so I'm not a big music festival person, but I used to go to those just because, like, they were free. I mean, they were part of like the 
student dues, basically. Um, so I went to those. But the only actual, like, legitimate concerts I've been to, the first one I ever went to was my friend Wendy's, like, 13th birthday? Maybe you were older. 14? 15? I don't know. It was a Clay Aiken concert. Clay Aiken. Don't get, it's, I loved Clay Aiken. No, it was, I was here for it. Um, but <laughs> that's the first concert I've ever been to. And then the only other one I've ever been to was a Taylor Swift concert. It was a red one. I went with my uncle. And it was awesome. I love Taylor Swift. I still love her, even though, she, you know, she's been revealed to be a little bit on the shady side. But I still love her. I love her music. And it was amazing and awesome. And I had a good time. So that's that. Do I plan to go to any concerts in the future? Not particularly. If anything, I would want to see Gavin DeGraw. I love him. Um, I've always said I would really enjoy a Justin Timberlake concert or Bruno Mars just because they're really good entertainers. But music-wise, I would love to see Gavin DeGraw. Mm, love him. So I just put, this is a ColourPop shadow in Glitterati. That's what I put in my inner corners. I did that because that's part of the look that I did yesterday. Um, and just brings a lot of light to the eyes. Okay, just to wrap up, I did put some lashes on. These are the Ardell 122s. I used my NYX Suede Matte Lip Liner in the shade Sandstorm all over my lips. And then a little bit of the Buxom Full On Lip Cream in the shade Dolly. So that's my lip combo just a little bit in the center there. But I think that wraps it up. Thank you guys so much for asking your questions. I hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you next time. Bye!